Hello everyone, welcome back to today's video. This is for members only, but for the first video, I'm gonna show it to my main YouTube channel. I don't usually review TV shows for my main channel. It doesn't really make sense to watch a whole series, though I might do maybe like a thoughts after video, maybe or podcast on Love is Blind season seven. This is Love is Blind season seven for members only in just this first episode. I invite all of us to watch it together, main channel and members to see uh, if you guys like it. And if you do become a member and watch me review the rest of the season here on this channel and know that becoming a member does support the content. It really does. And you get to use cool emojis and get a little bubble emoji next to your name. So it might be worth it for you. With that said, you can't see, but Indiana Jones is sitting right there. And if you have the Indiana Jones emoji, go ahead and spam that in the comments. Also, before we begin, and also so I can get through copyright, you know, on YouTube, there's a lot of rules when you review Netflix shows. So for the first 60 seconds, I've got to talk to you before I start reviewing the show. Just a reminder that I do drink my daily collagen. And if you're going to do that, also keep track of it. It takes like three to four months to see any quote results. So I actually keep a calendar and it has like every new little vitamin I take or collagen or I can, I know exactly the day I started collagen. I know exactly what day I'm on. I know how to track my improvement. So for those asking in the chat, I see you guys during the live streams who are doing collagen, just take the appropriate dose. Mine's like a scoop a day. I think it's like 10 grams. I could be wrong on that, but it's like, like the scooper comes in the little bucket a little scoop a day with my water. This is non-flavored collagen. You can see it's discolored my water, but it's not flavored. And I do that every day and I've been doing it and I swear my nails are better. Like you can actually see my nails. Do you see how long my nails are? I've never had nails. Like I've always just bitten my nails. Now that I've stopped, look how long my nail is. I think my hair is doing better. If you're like me, like we're all losing this side of our hair. Like <laughs> But look at all these little baby hairs that I'm like, oh, are those new? I can't tell. But I also feel like my bald spot on the top of my head is definitely healthier. It's not perfect, but it's healthier. So just a little suggestion for those asking. All right, let's watch season seven, episode one of Love is Blind. I'm scared. Because what if something happened with a girl I catch feelings for don't feel the same way towards me? If you need me, call me. Don't, don't worry, worry, baby. baby. Just call me. Like not. If I was in a gate, I would have to. I think you're and welcome to Love is Blind. Looks sweet. I want somebody gonna choose me through thick and thin. You come off as crazy to be like, so do you want kids? Or like, how do you see yourself being a husband? Okay, pause already. I think that is so true. And that is why I think there's a distinct difference between like a courting style dating, which is what my partner and I did, and sort of the traditional, well, I should say not traditional, but like casual dating market, which is fine. In my 20s, casual dating made so much sense. But now that I was in my 30s, it didn't make sense to go on a first date and not have the serious conversations about finance and kids and future, which for us, well, I'm married, so I don't know. I don't know if that's really what it was, but I think it was the compatibility of wanting to have that serious conversation right away, day one. You know, our first date was like eight hours and we went over everything, medical history, all of these other things. Now, to be fair, we had been chatting before the first date, but we hadn't really talked, so... I don't know. For us, it made sense. But again, I think it depends on what stage of the dating process you're in. When I was 21, it made no sense to have those conversations. I was never going to get married at 21. Some people do. It was never going to be me. You get a job, you get your dream job. And I had my dream job. I made a lot of money. And I want to find love so bad and my job wouldn't let me. So I actually quit my job to be here. Personally, there ain't love strong enough to make me quit my job. Okay. But also, I just don't understand how that makes any sense. I mean... To quit your job for specifically love, specifically love, is just go to therapy. That feels very insane to me personally. I couldn't even imagine making that decision. But at the same time, I can see why what she really might mean is I'm going to change my lifestyle in order to fit a partner into my lifestyle, which I think is valid. But to say the words, I'm going to quit my job to find love... You know, I don't know about that. Trying to find a man, find like a hidden gem back on the back floor. Everyone's really pretty this season. I know one of the biggest complaints about Love is Blind is that like people are too attractive and everyone this season is pretty attractive. Like people look good this season. So, it, you know, 
It's kind of interesting. I'm not sure that this experiment, honestly, I'm still, I'm not sure how it would work with a more diverse casting, but I would say that the, the, the love is blind season I really want is the pansexual love is blind season. Where is the gender neutral group of people? Get like 50 of them. Trust me, they're going to like pair up. Like that would be a great season to watch. Still shocks me on why I'm single. Mm, I think being shocked that you're still single is a problem, not because of her, but because we're trained to think there's something wrong with us if we're single, when we really should be so sure of the person we're picking. We're so high compatibility that we're not risking that sort of heartbreak, cheating, financial infidelity, abuse, any of those things. We're really picking someone based off their character. Lack of trying or from lack of interest. Okay, now she's saying it's not because of a lack of interest or a lack of trying then it's a lack of compatibility, which is valid. That's the best reason to be single is you haven't found anyone who's morally or value-wise compatible with you. What a great reason to be single. Always been the person that wanted to get married, especially because my mom and dad got divorced when I was six. And then, you know, she remarried after that and that mm. one didn't work as well. Ooh, I just that's not, that's hard. That's hard to break that generational curse. How do you know what a healthy relationship look like, looks like if it wasn't modeled for you? That's really difficult. Right? I actually think I benefit in that way. I really think my parents modeled a healthy relationship between themselves for me. And it's it's really hard when you don't have that. I remember looking at her when I was younger and being like, don't worry, mommy. One day we're going to have a daddy like the guys in the movies. I will be the one to get married and to stay married. Who do I have the pleasure of talking to? Ashley A. Who is this? This is Tyler. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Oh, I'm nervous. I'm oh, I can see them already. Like, some, I, I'm going to make predictions throughout this series. That's like, I'm going to make my, you know, last, last season, I did really well. I almost got all of them correct, except one of them threw me for a curveball because Demi and Ollie were like, they said not yet, and then they broke up. Oh, I, oh, but I got every single prediction right last season. So let's see how I do this season. I already am going to predict that they're going to have high compatibility-ish enough on the show. Not high compatibility, my high compatibility, but they're going to have maybe a connection. They look really good together. Fingers crossed. Let's see if I'm right. They already look good together. Are you? I am very nervous. You should be nervous. Yeah. <laughs> you know why? They both have very warm energy and they both have very, and I'm going to say this in the nicest way possible. They both give me the vibe and I could be so wrong. Nerdy kids who became hot later. Maybe that's the wrong category, but they both feel like kids that weren't always fashionable, but learned how to be fashionable as they got older, maybe. I'm not sure, but I'm getting that vibe from them. What about you? I like to try new restaurants. I'm a mm -hmm. big foodie. Oh, okay. Um, I'm, I'm a huge food guy. Love nice. to cook. So what do you do for work? I'm a marketing director. Okay. I also sit on the board of a nonprofit that's geared towards women and children. I love mm. that you do that, honestly. Do you want kids? I do want kids. I'm Nick Dorka. Dork with an A is my last name. Mmm. Good afternoon. This is cute. What's cute, me? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I like to be flirty. I like to be sarcastic. All right. What's going on? Anything you want to talk about, I'm here to chop it up like a Caesar mm. salad. Do you think, just based off what we've talked about, your friends would like me? I think so, yeah. You think so? Yeah. <laughs> you think? <laughs> based off the conversation so far. <laughs> Ooh, he's giving a little bit, like, a little bit, like, uh, I watch YouTube videos to learn how to flirt with women vibes, like, just slightly. I don't know if it's kind of kind of he looks nerdy or he's too many pickup lines. I'm going to write down pickup lines guy. He he has um, I don't like his energy. I don't like it. But please keep in mind that according to Dr. Karkonda, who has a contact on the show, they do edit the show to have a bad guy to have storylines. So maybe they're just making him look that way on purpose. <laughs> he is a smooth talker. F boy question mark. I've been an athlete my whole life. Hey, I um, love it. And I work in professional football now. So Please I know. tell me it's Ooh. the Commanders. No, it's the better team. Oh, you're a Ravens fan? Well, they pay my bills, babe. <laughs> <laughs> I was a kicker and a punter. Like First of all, you were way smooth talking to be a kicker and a punter. I don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I was a kicker and a punter. Like, I was a, an All-American. I appreciate that. I'm even more swaggy when you see me in person. <laughs> like, I'm going to be straight up with you. I'm extremely blessed to get the chance to talk to you right now. I'll oh, tell you that. Aren't you the charming one? Don't miss me too much, okay? <laughs> this experience. Experiment is the best thing I've done in my life. You don't know who you're gonna talk to. You don't know if you're gonna leave here single. You don't know if you're gonna get down on one knee. I don't think I've ever been in love. Hello, hello. Hello. Honestly, I, I don't think I've ever been in love, girl. You don't know. Anxious, I get nervous, I overthink things. My stomach starts to turn. I could see that. He does seem like there's an insecurity within him, which is why the flirtation doesn't feel like it matches. Sometimes I think like insecure people that act more confident than they are naturally come off as like a red flag when it's just like be yourself, but then they tell you to fake it till you make it. It's confusing. Okay, I won't be too judgmental, but 
Mm, a real estate agent with bad pickup lines. My name is Nick D. I'll remember Nick D. Yeah, you will. Who do I have the pleasure of speaking with? My name's Hannah. I am 26. How are 26? you? 26? Mm. Okay, I yeah. like it. I'm 28. 28. Yeah. You're the yeah, youngest so one too. I oh, no, I'm the youngest girl in the group. I'm the youngest one in the group as well. Mm. So I guess we can vibe off that, right? But we want love, right? Like, you know. I'm looking for love. Very, very small town, like cheerleader in high school, date the quarterback type of feel, like growing up. <laughs> <laughs> I played college football a little bit professionally and like Okay. Nick. I was a kicker and a punter. That was my love and passion, right? Real estate kind of fell on my lap. And I love it. I love the interaction you get helping people out with the biggest purchase of their life, but like you know, obviously, if I could choose to, to be an athlete, I would. To find a husband because people are very superficial. And people say they aren't, but people are. And I'm sure I've been guilty of it, too. It's just sad. And, like, you could be the best person in the world, you have the prettiest face, your best personality, but if you have a couple extra pounds, you're not really into you. I quit my job. That's how serious I am about finding love. How is that a sell? Isn't that just like the biggest red flag in the world? I quit my job to find love. Like what part of that isn't like the biggest red flag? That's so funny. She's 26. She seems really sweet. I get that she struggles with dating because she's bigger and I understand fatphobia is a real thing. Um, but I actually think she's very pretty. She reminds me of Nikki. Doesn't she look like the makeup artist, Nikki? Um, but you know what's interesting about her is, is that she quit her job. I think that's the only red flag I see in her where I'm like, why would you quit your job? But you're 26. But how, yeah, I couldn't even imagine that being a positive. But you, to be fair, Love is Blind does pay them weekly. I think they get $1,000 a week. I could be wrong on that. And to be fair, lots of people also do this for the money. So it's like, I get it. It probably, she said she made tons of money in her job. So I'm assuming this didn't replace her income. But it, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have branded myself as the girl who quit her job for love. I would have just said like I'm ready for a change and I'm going to start off with this being a part of that change. But to say I quit my job for love specifically is like that's a lot for me. And maybe that's just cuz I'm a career person. Like my brain is like Ugh. you know, may a love like that never find me. A love that requires me to quit my job, may a love like that never find me, you know? This is Leo. 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 Hello. Hello. Art dealer. Hello, you? Hannah. Hannah. What do you do, Leo? I'm an art dealer. Mm -hmm. Ooh, interesting. That's a cool job. Do you like Van Gogh? I love Van Gogh. So I went to Amsterdam. Well. Ooh, okay. I already like him. I'm going to say, oh, I hope he's a, a good person. I already really like his energy, and actually, I like them together even. Because, yeah, okay, maybe. I don't know if they would match, like the cheerleader and the art guy, but if she likes art, and he likes art. I doubt he would be the superficial that keeps rejecting her. Mm, I could see a connection there. Okay. I feel like, on one sense, we're kind of talking about light stuff because it's just like, oh, we're talking about like how we eat dinner and stuff. But if we get married, like, that's like a thing you do. Like, you go out to dinner a lot. Yeah. Like hey, great. I love you, Leo. Great point. How you eat matters. How you spend your leisurely time matters. Are you a restaurant goer? Are you a, like, do you order food like my partner and I? You know, in our single life, we eat differently than in our married life. In a lot of ways, like, you know, maybe you order food a lot when you're single, but once you're married, it's like, are we going to still do that? Does that make sense to put that into the budget? I have some friends that spend like 2K a month on eating out. Y'all are overspending your Uber Eats. Like, that's crazy. But that's like our treat. So we obviously live, you know, on a budget. We're trying to plan for the future. We want to buy a house. And in this economy, you know, that's going to take us like a many years to do that. But a part of that is not spending two grand a month on Uber Eats, girl. So, like, it's interesting that these people, you know, your eating habits really matter because it reflects also your spending habits. And then also the kind of food you love. You know, are you comfortable around the food your partner eats? I couldn't imagine because, you know, I make a lot of Middle Eastern food for my partner and I. And, like, he loves everything I cook, which I appreciate. And he definitely, like, loves dolma. We eat, like, a whole distitha of dolma. All we love it. But can you imagine if he didn't like it? Can you imagine if he was, like, super, super picky? And, like, nothing wrong with being a picky eater. We all have our preferences. But I think it's a blessing that he does like the food. I think if he didn't, it would hurt my feelings, right? But, like, also, we wouldn't be compatible. Because, like, I need somebody who's open-minded to food, right? The time in the pods is too short and precious to play it cool. I like you. Yes, ah. I like you, too. I'm sure I'll see you tomorrow. Hopefully. Hope so. Oh, my gosh. I love it. Okay, Leo. I love it. He needs a fade in his hair. But otherwise, he's... I love him. My biggest insecurities is that... Is that a girl only wants me, like, for money? Girl, you don't look like you're worth anything. That's what I love about him. I love rich people that look poor. You know what I'm saying? Like, his hair says to me, I have no money, which means he probably has some money. And I love to see it, honestly. And I mean that in the nicest way possible. But uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, it signals I don't go to the barber, you know, because I'm too busy working. <laughs> but also, you know what I mean? That's interesting. Okay. 
Hello, hello. Hi. Mm. I think that an experience like this that focuses on the emotional connection first is an opportunity that, that I couldn't pass up. What's your name? I'm Brittany. What's your oh. name? I'm Leo. Oh you, my course, God, You would be like, I'm along for the ride. Yes, yes, anything. Oh my God, that's <laughs> like so important. Mm, I think I like him better with Hannah. Brittany Sweet, so far, I love her. Her name's Brittany. But sh uh, she, the you know how the higher energy and Hannah's lower energy, but at the same time, Brittany's like excited energy and Hannah's excited, but I feel like the wavelengths are probably more compatible with Hannah and Leo, but I don't know. Let's see. Brittany's funny, but she, I think she'd be better. S maybe. Hmm. I am single because I chase fun. My dating history is athletes and rock stars. She looks like the stereotype, huh? Like we really do fit into categories. Yeah, I could see that. She's so cute. Oh, we spell her name the same way. Love her. Oh, she's an esthetician. Oh, I like her. Yeah, she can't be with Leo, but uh, I think Hannah and Leo are probably better matched, but she's cute. Some people want to be boss babes and make all the money and live their lifestyle, and that's not how I want to live. I'm obviously a trophy wife is the text. Mm. You know, someone's got to be that girl, I guess. That's... That's going to be hard to find, I think, in the guys who show up on Love is Blind. I feel like the guys who show up on Love is Blind, I don't think any of them are looking for trophy wives. I think they're looking for more egalitarian couples. Though I will say Maria and Tom last season, very surprising how independent Maria felt, but yet how reliant on Tom's income she was. So ironic, really. But... Okay, interesting. That's why I say, like, be careful when your woman says they're independent because some women think being independent also looks like relying on their man's money, which I think is, like, really interesting. I think it's a – I think you could be independent and still have a provider, but I think that's interesting. Like, I might be the breadwinner in my relationship, but I'm not the provider. Like, I don't take on that mantle. That's not the dynamic. That's a dynamic. She wants a dynamic. My partner and I do not have that dynamic. You know, we are equals on a team doing 100%, 100%. Trophy wife is a dynamic. So it's good that she's honest with it because that's important. See, trophy wife. and But how many trophy wife relationships are about love? That's why I always wonder about them. Like, how do you have a trophy wife and it's not about objectification? I love a very masculine guy. No man on Love is Blind is a very dominant man. Let's be for real, okay? But also, she seems fun. Like, I don't hate her. I don't, like, I like her. I like her. I'm, I'm, you know, she's a Britney. But yeah, I'm not the biggest fan. I don't ever, it's hard to see these relationships as, these types of relationships as being healthy. So what do you do? I do skincare okay. and I host beach cleanups as well. We oh. have picked up 10,000 pounds of trash nice. in the past three years. Nice. You know, I think probably the thing I'm most excited about is to learn what it is I want that I'm looking for because I don't think about these things very often. I'm Taylor, how about you? Taylor. Ultimately, I want to come out of this with the person I want to spend the rest of my life with. My name is Garrett. Garrett? Yes. Can I call you G? Yeah, you can. That is what I tell people to call me usually. Oh. Yeah, super simple. Like, I play a lot of sports, so, like, on back. Oh, my God. I love Taylor's face. She's so beautiful. Look at those freckles. Everyone everyone is really good looking this season, especially the women. The women are really pretty this season. What do you do? I'm a physicist. I was chemistry for undergrad, and I mm. did my master's um, in energy policy. Ooh. I definitely work hard. I actually specialize in something called clean hydrogen energy. Okay. Yo, if this isn't a match made in heaven, bro, I don't even know what it is. They're both nerds. They both are educated. They're both like, okay, vibes, vibes. I, like, I haven't been in a relationship in quite a while. I don't want to keep doing this and then like another seven years down the road, I look up and I'm like, holy shit, like, I just wasted so much time. I know that you do quantum physics, so you might understand my thermodynamic <laughs> <laughs> law that I'm going to throw out. But like, right. I, I think that relationships are going like toward entropy. You need to work on keeping them together. That's cool. I'd love for my next relationship to be my last. It's the dream. Yeah, I had that realization with my partner the other day. I was like, oh my God, I'm never going to have to do a breakup ever again. Thank God. Because like breakups are the worst. It's just so painful for everybody. And it's hard to move people's things out of your apartment. Like, that's the worst part. And that's why when we were doing the courting process, I was like, I don't want to live with you. I have enough money and my job's secure. Like, I don't want to have to live with somebody just to break up and move my stuff out again or have you move your stuff out again. So I'd prefer that we just, you know, fly back and forth from, you know, Europe to America while we're courting and then move in when we're engaged, basically, because I've never been engaged. So if I'm going to be engaged, it's going to be like the, the real thing. And, uh, it worked out, right? But it is that idea of like, oh, yeah, I would like this to be my last. Uh, but, you know, you never know because we talk about this as well. 
if one of us passes away in the next five years or in the next 10 years, do we imagine we date again? And it's like realistically, probably, but maybe not. It just depends. Even, you know, you never know how life is going to go. It's not like this is literally your last relationship, but it's the idea that this is my forever partner, but forever is only as long as we're alive. So realistically, like who knows if one of us is going to get cancer, cancer is on the rise in millennials and we're both millennials. So it, you know what I mean? You never know. Yo, that was depressing, but I just need you to be realistic about your life. You never know how it's going to go. So be grateful. Every day you have somebody you love in your life. Oh, this is Washington, D.C. I just realized the text on the screen showed it. This is Washington, D.C. Interesting. Okay, so this this is a new area. I don't think they've ever been to Washington, D.C. How do you feel about having each other's phone passwords? You can have it. I want you to go through it and be more, you know, be more secure if you want to. I don't give a damn. If I'm telling you I want to marry you, I'm respecting you on every level. So if you're telling me, like, I think we should share passwords, cool, not a problem. You know, this idea is so funny to me. Uh, we have devices in the home. Like, we have an iPad. We have cell phones. We have computers. And it's shared. Like, we really are sharing everything. So it's my computer. Like, this is my computer. And he has his computer. And we have our own phones. But it's still, like... A device that's accessible to us like if I ever want the iPad to watch something it's not like he's like whoa or if I need his phone for something I just grab it and I use it it's not like you know what I mean like if he wants to if he, his phone isn't around he wants to watch TikTok and he wants to grab my phone like he doesn't have to ask me permission to touch my phone you know he doesn't have like if I saw him sitting at my computer I'd be like is your computer broken like that's so weird because it's he has his own computer but if he wants to use my computer like I'm not gonna sit there and think about it you know and of course that comes that that is a reality because we 100% trust each other but also all the testing all the stressing all the fears that happened during the courting process so if there's anything like that's going to be a surprise if there's anything he lied about or I lied about and we find out that's just a huge betrayal in the relationship like we consider lying like a form of abuse in this relationship we consider infidelity or anything like that a form of abuse and in in uh if that happens, then we have the right to divorce because at the end of the day, like I didn't marry a liar and I didn't marry somebody who's willing to abuse me. And if they're willing to do that, then that's it. And vice versa. If I'm, if I would ever, God forbid, like abuse this person, like I would, I would support them in divorcing me. I would never abuse somebody and then be like, I can't believe you're going to leave me. It's like, I don't, that's not my values. Right. So that idea of like hiding something like lying about your phone hiding it from your partner that's not okay and fyi for all the people that slide into my dms we do read them together and we do think they're sort of funny when i get a dm because i am a public figure i get it people see my instagram but they don't know i'm married so i'll get a dm from guys sometimes that are like hey i really want to make babies with you and my partner's like you don't even want babies and i was like they don't even know me and then it's like a big joke but they don't know me i'm just like i'm just they don't know britney they just see me as a public figure see my instagram and dm me but like we do go over them. We think they're kind of funny or like I show it to him. I'm like, this one's pretty good. This this look at this opening liner. It's I know it's not even real. Like I, I'm not a like I said, my brain doesn't think about other people. Um, my partner and I are just really focused on each other. So we're able to sort of accept that people will slide into the DMs without it being an issue because no offense. I don't like people like that. It takes a lot for me to like somebody enough to like bring them into my space. You know what I mean? Like. I've had enough bad relationships to know that like, I really like my space. So that's why my partner is so special because it's the first person I've ever wanted to share space with for the rest of my life. It feels really, really easy and comfortable and safe because that's an honest person I married. What's your first impression of me? Fun and bubbly, but not shallow. Just imagine my mom dying and how painful like that must have been. Whoa. Well, you've been through the same thing. And I'm like, okay, if she can do that, I could do this. For the family business and it's something that you love and you're passionate about. Like I'm like really fortunate to be 30 years old and like really not like have to worry about money at all it's something i'm kind of like honestly a little mm. bit uncomfortable talking about in general mm -hmm. but like mm. i mean Brittany does have a job she's an esthetician which is good so she's not necessarily using people for money but she wants to be a trophy wife like using the word trophy wife is such an interesting way to explain who you are in the story Mm, trophy wife, gold digger. I mean, what's the difference? And so in that case, that's what's hard for me is I don't, they're too close together for me to see them as very different categories, though they know they are. 
I know they're different categories, but it's hard for me. You know, I mean, they're both berries, but it's still a berry. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like he's trying to literally find somebody who's not in it for the money. So to be with Britney is such a weird idea to me. That's why I liked him with that other girl. Hmm. Like, I, I grew up, like, very well off. And, like, after I graduated college, I was, like, kind of being groomed to take it over. But, like, in, like, you know, like a decade or two, you know, like, it wasn't expected I was going to be taking it over, like, right away. And then um, I told you that a lot of them got cancer, right? Yeah. So because I had all of these family tragedies, I got inheritance. Whoa. Like, all mm -hmm. at once and kind of, you know, relatively young. I don't know if he should be telling America that he's wealthy. You know what I mean? Like, some, you know... But at the same time, okay. I'm like not trying to say what was me. Actually, this is important to say. I asked my partner this question. I said, what if I was a secret billionaire, but I didn't tell you until after we got married? He would be like, he said he was so annoyed. He's like, ew, so you like lied to me in order to marry me? And I was like, true. Because we have a radical honesty policy in this marriage. Like we do not lie to each other. So even if it was something like, oh my gosh, my partner is a secret billionaire, I would be kind of pissed. So like, what if I didn't want to marry a billionaire? There are a lot of consequences to marrying rich people. There's a lot of obligation you have to marrying rich people, like keeping the family business going, keeping a, a brand going, making sure you associate with certain people. Maybe I didn't want to marry rich. Like this idea of like anyone would want to marry rich. You have not met rich people with problems because rich people got problems that I do not want. So, you know, we kind of talked about that where it's all well and good to be wealthy, but, you know, not if you have to lie. It's all well and good to have like, you know, some debt getting married, but like it's not good to lie about it. Lying is never the answer me but the business i like was really blessed to inherit like mm -hmm. does like pretty well yeah okay you opened up the door for something that really i've literally been having an anxiety attack about all day mm -hmm. oh yeah okay in a marriage finances mm -hmm. how would you split the bills would it be 50 50 i don't know if i believe in paying all of it mm -hmm. and i don't but i also don't think i believe in splitting 50 50 if i'm like making more but I, I do like the thought of both of us paying something because it mm. feels like we're both invested. Mm. I'm glad because I because the other guys were hard 50-50. And I, I, I just don't believe in 50-50. Everything's 100-100. It's not your money, my money. It's our money. Like maybe this is just the way that I was raised. Like my parents do not have separate – like we all have the same – it's all of our money. It's all of our accounts. And maybe that's just the bubble I grew up in. But it's like I'm not going to fucking – like I'm not – I don't want to sit there and be like I paid this and I make more money and so this, this – like – we put all of our money together and we allocate it out to our different expenses, savings, emergency, future, bills, whatever else. Like, I don't, yeah, like, I don't, I don't want to keep track of who paid for what. Just, like, let's put it all into a pot. How much did we make this month? How are we out allocating it out to different uh, responsibilities and call it a day? That's us. I didn't realize, like, I don't agree with that. Mm. Okay. As girls, I, I do like nice things. And we shop more. Grooming and nails and hair and w my fucking workout classes and stuff are expensive. And my last relationship, I was taken care of 100%. Oh. Mm. What a pain. Well, I take care of 100%, but that's because I like it. So it's different. Like, it, de it depends. Like, I value what my partner brings to the relationship, even if it's not money. They bring so much more to the relationship that I need. I just don't care. Like, if we need more money, they'll get a job. That's kind of how we work. And I know some people are like, you could always use more money. Yes, but again, if your partner is going to work, that's time taken away from other responsibilities. We also have a different dynamic because I'm disabled. Like, there's different dynamics that go into relationships. And I think that's the problem that people have to remember. It's very different if both your partners are like super healthy or both of your partners, you know, can manage to still see each other while working full time jobs. You know, in I've seen too many couples really struggle to spend intimate time together because both of their careers are taking them in two different directions. And I think that's just as negative as, you know, anything else that could inter interrupt like the flow of the relationship. So you really got to play to each other's strength, right? What kind of lifestyle do you want that works for you guys? How is it going to benefit you in the long run? And so, yeah, but this idea of like 50-50 or 70-30 or whatever else, like it should just be like all of our money in a pot and allocated out. I feel like that just makes the most sense, but that's because I 1000% trust my partner. The scary part, and I've had this happen to friends of mine where they come home 
And the person they marry took out all of their savings, like $50,000, and spent it all. That's scary. And I know that's the fear people have. But I think that's why it gets down to, like, making sure you're choosing the right partner at the end of the day. Because the right partner is about their character. When temptation comes knocking, would they do that? Insecure about is, does she want me because of money that I was very blessed to have? Well, if I wanted to marry for the money, I would have married a very long time ago. God forbid we were to get married and then divorce. Of course, like, that money's meant to be ultimately, like, my children's. Oh. Okay. Do you oh. I mean, just get a prenup and say, like... <laughs> all of this is gross to me. I hate all of it. I hate all of these conversations. At the end of the day, if I'm willing to marry you, I'm willing to lose 50% of my money. I think that's how I feel. Because I'm the one who made the decision. I'm the one who made the judgment. I'm the one who made the judgment. And if I picked wrong, you can have 50% of my money. But also, like, I just don't, I think it's like, if I'm afraid that the person I'm marrying is going to leave me enough to say, like, you don't get any of my money if you leave me. Like, I wouldn't marry that person. I'd rather be single. Do you know what I mean? I don't know why. This sounds so icky to me that you would even get married to somebody you don't trust with your money. My grandpa got cancer, died. My grandma got cancer, died. Damn. My mom got cancer, died. My oh. dad got cancer. And my stepdad got cancer. Oh, my God. Three years. And I'm an only child. Well, oh, my God. While it happened relatively young, I'm unbelievably grateful for so many things. Deep. And, like, I grew up financially, like, very well off. Yeah. Like, I'm not trying to build an influencer career. Like, I'm a rich fucking artist. Like, yeah. my, like, I grew up, like, I grew up, I went to a country club, went to private school, went to college. Yeah, yeah. I'm incredibly financially fortunate. But I'm also, like... It's, look, I would much. Leo's got a little bit of the tism uh, aesthetic. Like, he's very monotone, but I think he's saying it very matter of fact. But I think if somebody else was saying it, it'd be bragging. I think he's just stating a fact. But I, he talks about it so much. They've got him on camera saying it so much. But I actually think it's a little neurodivergent. Like, I can't, you know, I always say everyone's neurodivergent, but he stands out. See how he talks differently? His eyes are different. He's like, he's communicating very differently to the social group. Like, he's even technically. In a, in a regular social group, this could be a reason people would see him as the enemy. But he's not bragging. He's just stating the fact. But I, so that's why my brain's like, are you, are you neurodivergent, sir? Because like, this is almost like a social faux pas. But he's doing it anyways. But I don't hear any bragging in his tone. So I think he's just stating it as a fact. I'd rather have my problem than the problem of lack of money. It's a really great lucky problem to have. Yeah. But I also, it's scary because like oftentimes a girl may want me like, because like does she just want me because she knows I'm like an art dealer and that like I have like money. I really believe that I'm like a, a unique special person. I was learning Italian art terminology when I was like. Mm. I don't believe anyone's special or unique. I think everyone's just uniquely themselves, but they're not like special. So that's an interesting idea of like, I think I'm a unique person. I think you might just have autism, sir. I was learning Italian terminology when I was six. Sounds a little tism, bro. Like, I wonder if that's what it is. And he's an only child, so he has no, like, references for socializing differently. Like six. Uh, for example, I'll give you one. Sprezzatura. That's Italian for the consciously trying to make something seem effortless. So if, like, you're wearing something, but you kind of, you make it look like you just, oh, you just do it together, but you actually put a lot of effort. That's sprezzatura. I damn, I did just because you're wearing Rolex. <laughs> I want someone that appreciates that. And I want someone that... Right? Like, he's coming off... We get it, bro. But also, it just feels very different. It doesn't feel like Sam last season in Love is Blind, UK. It doesn't feel like that energy. It feels different. That is like that themselves. And I, I think that I'm deserving of that. And I think I want a wife that's curious, too. And I think that's one thing I love about Hannah, is she's so curious. Like, she wants to learn everything. And that, to me, is... So fucking hot. Dude, look at these. Ooh! I... Let's go, Hannah! What? Didn't he... Hannah got muscles, bro! I can see myself, like, explaining something about art to Hannah and be like, oh, no way. I'm starting to feel some connection. Oh, it's dripping, but it gets cold, so it, like, stops. And it's so cliche, but, like, I'm starting to feel it for two different girls. Mm. That just makes it even more complicated. Now, he needs to be with Hannah... If he wants somebody on his level of curiosity and introspection, he needs Brittany. If he wants someone who's going to lighten up his mood and make him more fun and spontaneous. But I think Hannah's more stability. Uh, but that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's got a bit of a tism. Bit of a tism. <laughs> I don't, like, know what you look like. But, like, in the dream, like, you were, like, I mean, you're, I'm assuming, white. Mm -hmm. Like, in the dream, I was standing. Oh! 
No, no, and like a kid. You, no, no, you cannot bring ethnicity into the guessing game, sir. And he's assuming white based off her voice, which is fair. I guess like sometimes like I can tell, you know, there's like a we all have like a tonality to us. But then, you know, what is white really? Because you might sound valley girl, but you might not be. And so it's like, what does that mean? Mm. You're not supposed to bring... Hello, love is blind, sir. Also, I noticed she's wearing like yin and yang sandals. That's pretty cute. One thing I appreciate is like you didn't... You haven't like asked me like a million things about my job. Like, oh, like, so do you get to go to Art Basel? Like, what kind of art do you sell? Like, some people are like, so what's the most expensive piece of art you sold? And it's like, I understand wanting to know that because it's like inherently interesting. It's like, you just don't meet an art dealer every day. I don't want like my job to ever define me. Yeah. Even when I first shared. You talk about it a lot, my bro, but I get it. I get it. That with you, you weren't like, you wanted to know me, not like about my job. Yeah. To be honest with you, like when I heard it, I was like, oh, that's cool. But like, I don't even know exactly what that even means. To be honest. Valid. <laughs> well, I, I like appreciate that. You deal art, like I guess. <laughs> True. Like, honestly, I don't know what that means. Like I have an idea in my head, but like, you know how people always like talk themselves up to like, I'm an art dealer. Like, what does that mean? Like it could mean something or nothing, or it could just mean like, it. what does that mean? Even though you're the youngest one here, I think you might be the most mature one. I've one of the things I'm most attracted to, to you is like, you're clearly like really smart. Like, I know a lot about a lot of things, I think. I love that. <laughs> We're just like perfect for each other, you know? I, we are actually like, I think amazing for each other. <laughs> I know. We might be like twin flames. Hmm. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, that's not good. Twin flames are not good. Twin flames, red flag. Oh no, no. Did he just learn that from like Instagram or something? You don't want to be a twin flame. I don't know if he knows what it is to be someone's companion. I'm not sure. I'm not sure he understands it, but then maybe, hmm, there's something here. Now that I think about it, I will say that no one's really talked about companionship in a, in a very like um, fundamental way between the three of them. They've talked about money and slight compatibility, but to be fair, it is the first day. Oh, your glasses. I am. You got the sexy librarian look. Yeah, I am. And listen, I'm wearing pink heels with like a pink like suit, like suit vest outfit. I know that you were a cheerleader in high school. You dated the quarterback, yeah. you know, so. You know what I was thinking last night? What's that? I'll be your Taylor Swift and you can be. <laughs> I could be the Travis Kelsey. You could be my Travis Kelsey. Oh my gosh, I'm a little bit better looking than Travis, but. Okay, hey. okay. I I think okay. you might be a little bit better looking than Taylor anyway. Oh, don't say that. <laughs> so my celebrity crush. So it used to be Beyonce. I, I think Scarlett Johansson's up there too. Scarlett Johansson, yeah. She is a babe. Henry Cavill, I feel like that would be Oof. mine because he's like hot, but he's also like he builds computers. Superman, right? Woo. I kind of look like him, like the less buff version of him. I look good for my woman. Not saying I do look good, but that's who I kind of want to look good for. What if for those people though that are attractive people and then like our kids come out ugly? Hey, look, we're gonna love them. Yeah, right? we're still gonna love them. Love them. <laughs> you know, yeah. I can't wait to just experience life with you. <laughs> Do you have a couple cute bathing suits picked out for uh, our trip? They're not that great, but. <laughs> <laughs> you could wear whatever you want. You could think you look terrible. I would still hype you up. You know, I'm gonna compliment you a lot. If you come out of the shower and you dress up and you walk out the room looking like a whole snack, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like come up and like, you know, come up behind you. I don't love him. I don't love this energy. I'm not a big fan. Not a big fan. I just don't, uh, it's not my love language. I just don't like any of it. I think he's deeper than what people think he is. No, he, I, he's just so smooth. Yeah, I just think of the love of my life. He is not smooth. He's fumbling, bro. He feels like he watched, a, 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 what's, what are those guys on the internet who do like coaching for dating? He, a pickup artist. He feels like a pickup artist to me. He does not feel smooth. Anna, that man is not the love of your life. You don't hear a Thank you, Anna. That man is not the love of your life. Thank you, person. Thank you. I don't, but I don't need to. You got all of your reasons. Hannah's like 26 and gives off a little bit naive. I mean, she quit her job for love. Never a good sign, girl. Like, it's gonna, it's gonna be Nicole all over again picking Sam. It's like, girl. I hmm. really, 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 really care about you. Aww. And I'm, I'm blown away by how much I do. I feel a very strong, like, intimate connection with you already. You know what he looks like? He looks like nerdy Captain America. What? I don't know what that actor's name is. Mm, whatever his name is. He looks like nerdy Captain America, which is cute because, like, he's nerdy and she's nerdy. And, like, I think that's a good match. I feel it, too. It's, like, magnetic. Honestly, it's crazy. <laughs> do you feel the same way I do? I do. Mm. I really do. Great. I care about you a lot, and I am, like, excited about talking to you about what the potential life together would look like. And... That's a big step for me mm. and for you as well, I'm sure. I 
agree. Tell me more about your parents. My mom's first name. I think it gives away part of like how I look, like my ethnicity. The thought hadn't crossed my mind at all in any direction on that. So mm. I have to admit, like I, I've dated white girls. That's all I've ever dated, mm -hmm. even without knowing like what ethnicity you are. It's just I'm not sure what that looks like for me. They're like going for like it, everything is just so. It's just a shock. I mean, it's really hard to explain. Um, like not a shock, but you are very like calculated about what you say. And while I, I love that about you, it's also like I'm like, what's she hiding? What was that whole interaction? That was the weirdest interaction. I actually wondered if saying names would give away people's backgrounds. You know what I mean? So I wondered if sharing names would probably be a disadvantage for Love is Blind. But like, that must have been cut. I'm going to say that was weirdly cut from Netflix because like, that interaction made no sense. Like, it almost insinuated that he cared that she wasn't white, which I think is not maybe. I mean, I don't know. Maybe he does care. But like that, it feels like. What does her ethnicity have to be with like her calculated way of speaking? It feels like Netflix cut that to be more dramatic. And that's good feedback to get. Just like, I guess it's hard to hear that. It comes across as like really calculated. Um, and it's, it's probably there's nothing wrong with being calculated in how you speak. If you're trying to make sure that you don't overshare or in the show, you don't give away information because it's love is blind. Like, I think we should all be a little bit more considerate about how we speak, which is a form of calculation, but the implication is the calculation is malicious, which I'm not getting any vibes from her. And hiding things is different than keeping things private, right? She is on TV. It's being recorded. People will hear it. You know, maybe some people overshare too much on a show like this. So I feel like what what just happened? Where did, what happened in this conference? Like, there's obviously things we're missing. But then also like the subtle, like, I don't want him to know my ethnicity and, um, is this like a carefully curated image that she's presenting? What? I, I don't know. What? And I, and I don't think it is. I really don't. The reason that I wasn't going to share my ethnicity was because it was an opportunity to like have someone not Obviously. know how to look at all. It's love is blind. You're not supposed to know people's ethnicity. That's the whole fucking point. I am very uncomfortable with this whole conversation. Her ethnicity should never even been an issue. I wonder why his brain went in that direction. Like... It'd be horrible just to assume he's racist, but like, why did his brain go in that direction of it being something? Obviously, we know why she's hiding it. It's the show. My feelings for you are insane. Like I've described it as like, like my heart feels like it's being ripped out of its chest, but I know that I need to know more before I'm going to get there, before I'm ready to like, you know, make that next step. I need to know more about who you are. I think you definitely feel the same way and I hope that you do. Like we, we need to learn more about each other. I'm excited to maybe, you know, get to know you more and show more of me, but I think I'll be really hurt if like this doesn't end up working out and I like gave away what I look like. I you, you, you should not, this goes back to say, uh, season uh, two? Was it season two where he asked like, do you think I could be, would I be able to pick you up? Do you remember that season two? I forgot what his name was, but it's, I'm conf what's happening? Do they forget how the experiment works? I need to, at a certain point, like feel that I'm enough. I'm sorry, is she supposed to be like, I'm Asian, and he's like, sold? Like, what is the implication here? Like, she's not enough, but if she said her ethnicity, like, he would want her because he's white and she's Asian? Like, I'm, what is this, what is this editing? This conversation is so weird. What is anyone's logic in this situation? What is she implying that, like, she has to know she's enough and not being dated for her ethnicity? Like, is she talking about being objectified because she's an Asian woman, which does happen, you know, and is the typical white guy goes for an Asian girl because they think it implies something. Is that what she's saying? And is he saying that her ethnicity is like being hidden away because if she said her ethnicity, like he would be like, oh my gosh, like it, what could it mean? I'm so confused. I'm so confused. I almost want to just tell you so we can like start talking about like what? I know, I know. No, but don't, but don't. Seriously. It's always been me. I don't mm -hmm. believe in roles. Okay. 100%. Um, Ooh. I'm definitely, no matter what, always going to be a protector. Um, that's the role I'm okay. going to constantly play. But I also love to cook. So at no point do I ever expect my wife to be in this kitchen cooking, slaving after we both just finished work. If we want to eat out tonight, we eat out. If we feel like cooking, we feel like cooking. If I do the dishes, I do the dishes. There is not, this is not 1948. I'm a very good skier. Mm -hmm. I like to ski. I can do the little. Oh, people just out here skiing in Washington, D.C.? Like, I've never been skiing. My partner's obviously skied because like Croatian ski, I guess, but I've never skied. I used to ride horses professionally. I love horses. Horses, skiing, are all these people wealthy? Is it cause, is Washington DC y'all wealthy, huh? That's crazy. Horses? It was growing up struggling. Mm. My mom didn't have much and she did her best what she could. Um, I don't know if I told you that her dad cut her out 
of his life or having kids outside of her race. No. Oh. My mom, she's Serbian, and her family, oh, like. Oh, Serbs, let's go, bro. Her dad's side, they pretty much disowned her. And she just had her mom, which is my grandma. I just remember we didn't have shit. We would like have to put our mattresses in the living room. And, like That's probably why he skis. If his mom's a Serb, like I'm assuming that's why he skis more than having money. You know, keep the heat and like at night, like my mama cook food and it's enough for us. And she'd be like, oh, I'm not hungry, but I knew she was hungry. Mm. She mm. would work all day. Then she would like come home enough to like get us dinner. And then she would work a night shift. Mm. And she was just raising three kids by herself. That's it was crazy. Just an extreme struggle for Damn. her. I'm sorry to hear that. I want to say I was like nine, ten, somewhere in that range. And she sat us down. So because of his lived story, he's implied that he's mixed or biracial. So he's at least told her what his mom is. So now she can kind of assume maybe what he is maybe. So it's hard love is blind to tell, tell your story without really saying what you look like. Because so much of what you look like is how the world treats you. I mean, the fact that his mother had to deal with racism, the fact that she had a race or like his, his mother, his father, I guess, had to deal with racism. But like his mother's father is racist. Like the fact that that's a story implies, right? so much of your history so it is hard with love is blind to kind of not bring looks into it just because of that reason right it defines you uh, or i'm sorry i was thinking about if i was on the show and i was like oh my parents are immigrants like even saying my parents are immigrants there's so much implication in that but they could be immigrants from italy but the implication when you say immigrant in the united states is that they're coming from maybe not a european place obviously my we're a syrian so like we come from the middle east but it's like what is the implication there? I mean, I'm still obviously, I have white skin, right? So I'm not a brown Assyrian. I'm a white Assyrian. So like there's something in that that's sort of like, it's but see, I wouldn't want to be with anyone where that mattered. Like it, it shouldn't matter what skin color I have. And now she lost her mom. Mm. And now she's just raising us. And like Where's his dad? Like, that's the question. She got ostracized from her family for being with somebody who looks different from them. So where is this guy? She would cry like random nights and we would just lay there like hair crying or like you just see it in her face some days. Like I told myself when I was young that I'm gonna be married, I'm gonna be happy, and I'm gonna create a mm. big family. I've wanted that so bad. And I've seen what it's like to not have it. But like I want, you know, my grandkids and my kids to all wanna come over, like on holidays, like mm -hmm. yeah, like mm -hmm. Tyler's cooking and like I get to spend time with you. That's why That's I nice. I'm here. That's why I'm, I wear my heart on my sleeve. And the other interesting thing is, I'm a lot like Britney's ex is very structured, very like analytical. And I, you know what? I feel like her and I would attract each other outside of the pod. Him and I. I do not feel like that is true. Am I mismatching them? Like I don't, the trophy wife with the nerdy art dealer? I mean, actually wait, no wait, okay. Okay, 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 sometimes, sometimes, okay. Sometimes those dynamics happen, but they're usually, are they good ones? I don't know. Okay. 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 Nerdy guy with the hot girl. That does happen. Uh, okay. That's, oh, that just came to me. Him and I would not, I don't think we would find each other. I agree with that. I don't think Hannah and him would ever be attracted to each other in the real world. Brittany and him would meet because Brittany would be seeking a man with money, but would he be seeking a trophy wife? See, that's the thing that's ironic. Yeah, I, I agree with him. I think his assessment's correct. I don't think him and Hannah would meet each other outside or like each other. And he might not like Hannah. Like they don't match physically, but I don't think Brittany and him match aesthetically. And I think couples should match, not like be exactly the same body type or anything like that, but like be complimentary. And this is very specific because I don't want the fat phobia people to hear me. I don't want the short girl talking people to hear me. I don't want the like, I don't, it's not about the man being shorter, taller than the woman. It's not about someone being fatter or thinner. It's about like the aesthetic being a whole package. Like, I think I really match my partner. I think when we go out, we match, we look like a couple. And I just think it's because we're complimentary in terms of lifestyle habits. Like you remember last season, for Love is UK, I, I should say the first season of Love is Blind UK, uh, 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 Freddie and Kat really struggled because they didn't quite match lifestyle wise. And so aesthetically wise, they looked kind of good together, but it didn't quite make sense. And look, they didn't end up together. So mm, something like that might be at play. I, I know what kind of guy would want to go after Brittany. I think like a lot of us, but what kind of guy would want to go after Hannah's personality? 
I think part of like Hannah's personality is she's very young. She yeah, is. Yeah, exactly. Hannah does feel very young. 26 is pretty young. She also like quit her job for love. That's such a young person thing to do. Come on. Who's your, oh no, Ashley. Ashley. She was like, I would date you out here. I was like, she would never had a chance. We wouldn't have got this far. I would have seen her, whether she's attractive or not attractive. Either way, if she is attractive, I would have talked to her. If she's not, I wouldn't have talked to her. And then if she was attractive, I'm blocking her off. I'm shut off in the outside world. I've dated mm. attractive. One word that never popped in my head, ever one describing a woman I want is safe. Mm. I've always been a protector, and now I'm feeling safe. Mm. That's one thing I've never had. If you feel deeply, I'm not telling you any decision made. I said earlier that I'm not necessarily into like the protector roles and stuff, but I think he's the kind of protector that's I think coming from a really good place, not in like a misogynistic place, because you know he talked about like doing dishes and helping out and cooking. So I don't think he's coming from the protector that's toxic. I think he's coming from the protector that's healthy. And I look, I think if both partners should be protectors because you're gonna need to feel safe. So it's the fact that he feels safe with her that I think is important. But we can all go home and find someone like our ex. They're two very different kind of girls. Brittany's gonna be expensive. We talked about this in the Love is Blind UK. Are you gonna come to the pods and end up with your type? And is the type you've had a pattern of destruction or the type you've had something you wanted healthy? Look, I've always dated the same type of person, whether it was a boy or a girl, non-binary, but I've always been looking for the healthy, high compatibility version of that. And I found it, but I've always basically been with the same person my whole life. You call him Mr. Suave. Yeah, he's just like, I'm naturally flirtatious. Like, do I want to marry someone who's naturally flirtatious? I don't know. Probably not. I don't know anything about him. I'm like, I, see, I just heard his name a lot in the last 24 hours. Yeah. Like, He's a fun, he's a fun time. Like, I do like him, don't get me wrong. And like, he is like, he's like, I think he's a hot guy. You know, because he's ever had a problem finding someone. I feel like with him, I'd have to be this perfect woman. How are you still talking to him? Because he's charming. We have a different definition of charming. And I just still don't know why I don't believe him, but I feel yeah. like it's just a gut well, feeling. Well, because your gut feeling. Yeah. The way he talks, you can tell that he's very... Man, these girls really trying to help her out, man. These girls really trying to give her a warning, but that's the problem. You can't tell people what to do. They got to do it on their own. Uh, experience with women, and he knows what to say and how to say it. And it's scary that he, it might be like manipulating. And I think I had a, such strong feelings for him. I don't want him to ever break my heart. I think he wants a trophy wife. Mm. He definitely objectifies me. Like, like, I can't wait to see him in a bikini. If I was 250 pounds and maybe not like a supermodel, I know he wouldn't. He's like someone I think that like I would not want to go to sleep without makeup on. Like, that sounds like a walking red flag. That's amen, Nina. That's crazy. Walking red flag to feel like this person's not going to like, girl, for the record, I don't even wear makeup. Like, this is my, obviously, like, this is my, I've been editing all morning. I posted a video this morning. I've had my coffee. Like, I haven't even had food yet because, like, I usually eat a little later in the day. Like, I have stream later today. But, like, I don't wear makeup regularly. And even for stream, like, I stopped wearing foundation because I was just like, this is too much work to try to be camera ready. I'm going to try to be, like, as close to my everyday without, you know, looking dead in the camera. Like, for these videos, these are for members usually. Like, you guys see me clean-faced, girl. This is just... And this is how my partner sees me every day, girl, you know, but to be fair, like we're both very low maintenance in that regard. Like we like each other, take a shower, brush your teeth. We're good. Like, okay, get your hair done, but like everybody relax. And it's not bad to wear makeup every day. It's not bad, but to feel that pressure of not wanting to go to bed without your makeup on, like that is a real stereotype, a real problem, a real issue people face in some of their marriages. And like, God, may a love like that never find me or you. Hannah, you know what you gotta do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. just, you just don't want to do what you want to do. <laughs> you know what you got to do. See myself like proposing to you. my one wifey. I don't care about other women. I mean, at this point, it's like, it's Hannah. It's such an extreme decision. Even I love you, I want to date you. It's like, because that shit's like serious. Yeah, dude. I've never really loved romantically in my life, man. Am I crazy? Does he look a little bit like Aiden Ross? Is the editing making him look like a bad guy? Or is he kind of like, he feels a little bit F-boy to me and that's the problem. And he's presenting himself that way, which is always the problem. Look, you know how they say put your best foot forward and people take that as like, why? Or, you know, fake it till you make it. Faking it till you make it works in some things. But when it comes to love and compatibility and partnership, I think it's probably the wrong decision to make usually. Because you're just being sort of dishonest in a way that feels like people feel it. They're like, oh, it feels like you're hiding something. So I kind of, I can't tell if I'm prejudging him or if Netflix is editing it in a way that makes me think of him as the bad guy. But like, I felt that way with Sam. And I think the editing also amplified that. But I also think it was kind of accurate. I'm not saying everyone's malicious and everyone's a gaslighter and everyone's abusive. None of that can be true. And you can still be like 
the wrong type of person for somebody because you don't know yourself well enough to know why you're even into this person. And shallowness and superficiality is a reality for a lot of people. And that's just kind of the point of love is blindness to move away from that. But I think it's still occurs because humans are going to human, right? You know, I also kind of resent the fact that Hannah keeps being portrayed as like the fat girl or the big girl or she's like dating is, but she's just tall. Like, am I crazy? She literally isn't fat. That's not what fat is. Like, she's just, first of all, nothing wrong with being fat, but she, she's just tall. It's not. I need more time to think on it. She's just a tall girl. You know what I mean? Am I crazy? Like, I understand in the 90s she would have been called fat or maybe like she looks chubby, but she she's not a fat person. That's not, my brain would never think of Hannah as fat. I would think of her as tall. Does that make sense? Like, not lanky. She's not lanky, but she's muscular. You saw her flex earlier. Yeah, that's interesting how people have a perception of like what they constitute as like, oh, like you're not my type. I get that, but like, I don't, I don't see her as fat. I see her as tall and built. I have like a lot of concerns with you. Oh, why's that? Why are you here? Like, why did you want to do this? I've done a lot of reflecting what my parents look like and how happy they are, mm. the qualities they have. Come clear like I was doing it wrong. I want something sincere. I want something genuine. You know what's funny? I'm going to say this out loud. He doesn't fit the stereotype of a football player and she doesn't fit the stereotype of a cheerleader. But yet he thinks she's the cheerleader and she thinks he's the football player. Do you know what I mean? I think they both think the other one is like technically hotter than they are. Like everyone's beautiful in their own way. But on the scale of like one to 10 or like that idea or that typical, like Britney looks more like the cheerleader expectation and Tyler looks more like the football expectation. So Tyler, right? So like that's Tyler and Ashley. So I'm learning their names still obviously, but I think that's more like the stereotype of the expectation. So like this guy, what's his name? Oh my God, I already forgot. Mm, oh my God, see how I'm bad with names? He doesn't look like the stereotype and she doesn't look like the stereotype. So. I always wonder about that. Like when you say a thing like, I'm a cheerleader, we have an image in our head of what that means, right? Like I'm a football player. We have like an image. He said he's hotter than Travis Kelsey, which I think he was joking, but Travis Kelsey looks more like Tyler. See, Tyler and Travis Kelsey look more like together, right? So it's kind of interesting, like what image we put in people's heads of what we look like by just saying our hobbies, by just saying our interests. What do you mean? I mean, like, why has it become clear? Obviously, you talk about how great you look, right? And you went pro and then like, I don't think you have trouble finding someone in the real mm. world. You seem pretty perfect. Why are you here? Seems like you wouldn't have trouble. Because guys like you are the ones who like me in the real world. I am just hot to them or I'm just. I'm going to be real. In California, they are sevens sixes sixes like they're not california tens they're like maybe they're midwest tens or like maybe i'm missing something here but like it's interesting how both of them are so focused on how they look but i'm maybe i'm too california for this where i'm like you're not even an eight in california standard like you're maybe a seven maybe a six six seven california standard you know what i mean as a woman six six not five, not seven, six. Yeah, y'all from Washington, D.C. got to tell me what the aesthetic is there. Like, be this perfect person. Yeah. And, like, I don't want to be that. Like, I just want to be, like, unapologetically me. Like, what exactly what you're describing is what I'm looking for in a wife. I'm scared that, like, the reason why you like me so much is because you think I'm hot. That's what I was looking for. Like, I wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what it is. There's, like, this, like, gut feeling, and I can't, like, figure it out, and I just don't like it. Yeah, he just doesn't feel very honest. But neither does she. They're, they're all of them. All, not all of them, but this particular couple dynamic is like they are expressing and signaling kind of mixed messages to one another. It's hard to imagine. It's hard to know like who's hot and who's not. And what does that mean to be hot? Like neither of them are conventional in the hot expectation way. But both of them, like even though she's blonde and was a cheerleader, like she's obviously trying to convey the fact that like she'll say like, oh, I have to be as skinny as possible. But I think a lot of fat phobic communities would think she isn't skinny enough. I mean, Ty Tyra Banks would definitely tell her to go eat less, you know. So I'm a little confused on what they're trying to signal to one another. You carry yourself in your drive and, and your charisma. I love talking to you. I don't care. What he also gives off nerdy boy who tries to dress like the cool kids as well, like the shirt, the pants, the shoes. So I think they're both like nerdy kids, but then they did like the typical non-nerdy things. Like they both were in football and cheerleading, but they both kind of look like nerds who aren't the typical of what that aesthetic looks like. What you look like, what you wear, whoever I see, I'm going to love. So like maybe that makes them more compatible in some ways. Every fucking day. I don't want you to be perfect. I don't, and I don't care if you're not perfect. I'm not perfect. No matter what you do, I'm gonna love you. Hmm. Like, I feel like I'm coming in here to talk to my best friend, but 
I can't hmm. so fucking giddy. It's like, it's my best friend who I love. Maybe they are weirdly compatible because they both have the same problems. They're both immature. I can feel it. They're not mature enough. They both are fighting insecurities. They're both like nerdy looking people. And that, I'm just using that word because I don't know what else word to use. Like they're not the hot people in the room. I'm sorry. Like this isn't, I'm not saying this is like a negative. I'm saying like you keep thinking you're a pineapple, but you're literally a watermelon. And watermelons are cute, but pineapples are like, there's just something about it. And so it feels to me, and I'm a watermelon, so I get it. But like, I'm not, I just feel like when you're a pineapple, you are more like, you're, there's a specificness. Like Brittany is a pineapple. Brittany's probably the only pineapple in this whole community. Tyler is almost a pineapple, but he's kind of like a watermelon. Like, but he's kind of like a pineapple, but it's not. Like, I think Brittany's the only pineapple that I've seen in this show so far. But everyone's like a watermelon that looks juicy and firm at the same time. This this isn't really working. Uh, you know what I'm trying to say, though? Like, I'm, I feel like... I feel like this could make sense, okay? Just like for a visual, do you get what I'm saying? Like we're all different categories of attractive, but I feel like Tyler, no, I, nope, sorry, scratch that. I feel like these two, I'm blinking on names right now. These two keep conveying that they're pineapples, but they're just, they're watermelons. I can only marry one person. Could we spend the rest of our lives together? I'm just not sure. That sucks to hear because I saw myself leaving here with you, but I get it. I guess you, you know, you didn't think I was the right guy for you. So I really don't have uh, too much else to say. So I hope the rest of your dates go well and I hope you find the right person for you. Cause you know, you're, you're beautiful on the inside and out. So I wish you the best of luck. Nice way, Very took it very well. Good communication, good for him. Yeah, I feel like he could use a few, ther few years of therapy or something. I think therapy might change his life. I think she needs therapy. I think they, they both are too immature to know what they really want in a partner. But I think that, I don't think he's a bad person. I don't think she's a bad person. I think they're just too insecure maybe to know who they really are. You know what I mean? They're not secure enough to get married. You said, I'm not sure, and you said, you're my person I want to marry. <sighs> mm -hmm. I have to pee so bad, I'm about to pee my pants. Oh my god. I was like, Leo, oh. I did not mean to say that. What changed? Something changed, bro. Someone started drama. I'm regretting anything. I mean, Leo could dump me. I Fucking sucks. Do you think she changes her mind and chooses him instead? Do we think she's going to change her mind and... Brittany's gonna be with Leo and she's gonna be with him. Hmm. What do you think? Well, I think I like, love him, but I shouldn't love him. You know what I mean? He's going home today. Mmm. Is he? Is he? Or she's gonna be like, Nick, I want the D. Sorry, that's cynic. It's not funny, is it? Okay, so obviously, who knows where it's gonna go. With Netflix, you never know. Part of me wonders if she does give in and chooses Nick anyways. Leo chooses Brittany, and then that's how it proceeds forward. But yeah, I think it's so interesting. I think what we can take away from this for ourselves is in what ways do we signal to people who we are, what category we are, and do we even see ourselves clearly in the story? And that's really the question we have to all ask ourselves is do we even know who we are, what relationships we've had with people? Like you can be a person who people have only wanted for sex, have always just wanted because of how you look, and you could still be a person that isn't traditionally attractive. I think the way we push narratives or stereotypes into each other's minds about what we look like plays a huge role in this show. And obviously the discussions about ethnicity and race. And honestly, like, I'm still really confused what happened with the nerdy couple. Like, I'm a little confused at the communication about her whole ethnicity thing happening. So we'll have to see how that goes. But I think for ourselves, what we really have to ask ourselves is, do we know ourselves do we know what category we are? And do we know who we're compatible with because of that? It's just so interesting how much em emphasis we put on love and also how many mistakes we have to sort of make to understand ourselves and the people that we're really compatible with. All right, that was the first episode. If you guys wanna see the rest of the episodes and me reviewing them, my predictions, please become a YouTube member and I will see you over there on memberships. Oh, and before I go, Yes, there are tiers to memberships. I saw somebody ask me that. You have to do open with boundaries. There's two tiers, one with emojis, one with emojis and videos, including live streams after I've made them members only. So if you guys wanna become a part of the memberships, please check that out. Links down, low, down below in the description. Okay, bye. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make 
accents I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me Cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, dun, dun.